The John Morris Show, episode 89. 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother... Hey there, my name's John Morris. I'm a former U.S. Army veteran turned freelance web developer. And my goal for you at this podcast is twofold. First, I want to help you learn how to code. Second, I want to help you turn that code into a full-time living. Because if you're like me, what you want is the freedom, the satisfaction, and the income that you get from being a high-profile web developer. So if that's you, be sure to subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, SoundCloud, or YouTube so you never miss an episode. You can find all my past episodes and get subscribed at johnmorrisonline.com slash John. Morris show. Also, as you get value from the show, consider becoming a supporting listener on Patreon because you'll help keep the show free for everyone and you'll get access to exclusive courses, source code, and Q&A sessions available only to supporting listeners. Visit johnmorrisonline.com slash Patreon, that's P-A-T-R-E-O-N, to become a supporting listener. All right, let's get into this episode. Hey, everybody, welcome back to the John Morris Show, johnmorrisonline.com. Today's tech tutorial of the week I have is a little different this week. So normally what I do is I try to show you how to do things. And, you know, a lot of people love those tutorials and so forth. But I also remember that when I was first learning how to code, one of the most frustrating things could be dealing with the different errors and things uh, that can come up when you're writing something. So today I wanted to go through one that's fairly common that I, I know I get a lot of questions about and one that I know that when I came up with was always a little annoying for me. So I want to tackle this question or this this error and kind of hopefully help you show, show you how to work through it and figure out what's going on. So this is an error when you get um, call to a non-member function or on a non-object. And so uh, oftentimes when you're working with databases and, and getting data from a database, this is an error that you're going to see. So I want to walk through some of that. All right, so uh, do a little setup here. I'll show you the actual error here in just a second, uh, and then we can get into this. So just to start off here, you can see over here on the right, I have an array that I've created here. So this is a just a database that I have a little bit of information in for us to work with that I already created. And I'm just displaying it here so you can kind of see what's in here. So we have three elements in here. We have ID, name, and then favorite food. So just some stuff that I made up. And then we have this kind of little check down here, which is this echo that I put down here at the bottom that if we make it all the way through all this stuff, then we know that we don't have any errors, okay? So that just kind of is some setup that'll let us understand where we're at with all of this. All right, then over here on the code side, I've turned error reporting all on so we can see any errors that come up. Um, I've created a little function here that just makes it easier for me to print stuff out in these pre tags here. So these two things up here, you don't really need to pay too much attention to unless of course, obviously you want to show all errors or you want to use this handy little function here. All right, next I've set up my database credentials. So this is just running off of my local host. So I have my host name here. I have my database name, which is snippets. My username is root. And then there's no password because again, this isn't a remote server or anything. This is just running off my local host. All right, so with that said, then we have, uh, we're gonna start off this whole thing by connecting to our MySQL database. So I'm just creating a new variable called MySQLi. I'm instantiating a new instance of the MySQLi uh, class or object, and I'm passing in my database details. So host name, username, password, database. This is all just standard connecting to a database stuff using MySQLi. Next, I'm just doing a quick check to make sure that I'm connected to the database so that essentially all this data here uh, is, is correct. So uh, checking if there's a connection error in this MySQLi connection. If so, then I'm just gonna hit do die and I'm gonna spit out the error number and spit out the actual error itself. So for example, just to show you this real quick, if I change this to where this username, I remove a character so it's not gonna pull the right variable. Let me take a look at this over here, you'll see. You've probably seen this before. Undefined variable, username, warning, etc. All right, so 
and it's spitting out. You can see this is our text here. Connect error, access denied for user at localhost. All right. Now, once we get through all of that stuff, and we'll go ahead and put this back in here, then we can get into showing you some of how to deal with these different errors and so forth. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to just query something. So I'm just selecting all from a table that I know exists within this database, this Ajax get table, which is this table right here. So I'm just selecting all of that. I'm creating the while loop to loop through all of uh, the whatever that this query returns all of the different rows and storing those into a results array here and then I'm printing out that results array so this code right here is what creates this right here so this is kind of the standard thing that you would do this is with everything working correctly you can see we have no errors and so forth all right so and you can see we're using fetch associative here all right, so with that said, let's get into our first error here. So I'll go ahead and uncomment that and I'll refresh this. And this is the error that you'll, uh, I often see people ask me about. Call to a member function, fetch a soch on a non object in, and then it tells you what line on this file, in this file on line 32. So right here. All right, so. To explain this error, what's happening here is you're running a query here, and then you're assuming that you have some sort of resource back from MySQL that you can work with, and then you're immediately calling fetch a soch on that in order to get to fetch the results from that. So if, if you're not familiar, when you run this query right here, this actually doesn't this doesn't get you the array like this here that you're 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 used to seeing that, that you want back. This doesn't actually pull that for you. What it does is it pulls a my MySQL resource. And then you have to use PHP to pull the results from that resource. Okay. And that's what fetch assos and fetch object and fetch and all that stuff do is they actually pull the the results that PHP can work with from that MySQL resource. So what happens with this error is when you run this query and MySQL returns some sort of, there, there, there's no resource there for whatever reason. There can be a number of reasons why, but there's no resource there to then go in and fetch, fetch an associative array from. So what this is telling you is that you're trying to call a member function. So you're trying to call, call a class property, right? This is a, or a class, uh, um, method. This is a class method here. You're trying to call that on something that isn't an object, right? You can only call a member function, a class member function or a class um, method from something that is an object or it come, is, is a, a, a proper object. So uh, it's telling you, hey, you can't do that because this isn't an object. So what that should immediately tell you when you see this is that something's wrong here, right here. What a lot of people think is that something's wrong here because that's the line it points to. This is what often confuses people. It, it says line 32, so we're kind of used to, okay, the problem's here. What am I doing wrong here? But the problem is actually up here because it's a non-object, so you're, so, so, so that's the problem. Now, what's wrong with this particular query here? Well, you can see I'm saying and select dog from Ajax get. Well, that's there's there's no dog field in any of these. So there's nothing that that field doesn't exist. So my SQL's essentially returning saying, hey, that field doesn't exist. I can't query for that field, and so you're getting a non-object back. So that's one of the first kinds of errors that you can have is where the field that you're querying for doesn't exist. All right, so let's go ahead and comment that out and we will uncomment this. Now this one is when you're trying to query for uh, a table that maybe doesn't exist. And I'm giving you some simple examples here to show you the differences, but there could be lots of different things um, that could cause this. So again, we're doing select all from does this table called doesn't exist. And that's of course because that doesn't exist. And then we're doing the same thing. We're, we're trying to fetch our associative array from that and print out the results. Well, you can see here, I'm getting a fatal error, same error, call 
to a uh, member function fetch a soc on a non-object, and this time it's on line 37. So it's telling us it's here, but again, the problem is actually right up here. So when you get this error, when you're working with a MySQL database, almost always what it's going to be is something wrong with your query here. Okay, so don't let this line 37 confuse you. It's actually this line before that where we're running our query here. It's almost always something from your query. All right, so this one again is just simply because the table doesn't exist. Now I wanna show you something that can kinda of trip people up sometimes too that I see, which is, let's say we, we uh, do a search. So let's say we select all from Ajax get where our name equals Paul. Well, if you notice here, we have Joe, we have John, and we have Amy. So there's no Paul in this, okay? And so we're doing a query. We're doing exactly what we did before. We're doing a fetch a soc and printing out the results. Now, if you, when I refresh this, you'll notice there's no error. So if, you, if the, the field name is wrong, you'll get an error. If the table name is wrong, you'll get an error. But if you do a search for, for a value that doesn't exist, you won't get an error, okay? So that can be a little bit nuanced in, in how that works uh, when, when you're working with all this. Now, if you, you think about it, it makes sense because um, you know there's a good chance that a lot of queries that someone might do where they're doing a search um, probably are going to return something empty. So it, it doesn't necessarily make sense to throw an error in that instance where it does if the field doesn't exist or the table doesn't exist. That's an actual error. This isn't really an error. This is just, hey, that, that record doesn't exist or that search doesn't exist. So you can see why it works that way, but when, when you're brand new and going through all this, it can be a little bit difficult to kind of figure out. All right, so... The way to fix this then is to simply check to make sure that query is actually set to something uh, and, and and not just empty and, and or some sort of error or whatever. So here we're gonna run our query just like we did. Here we're using, we're selecting dog from Ajax to get. So that's the same as up here, which generated an error before, but now we're checking to see if query is actually set to something and then if it is, then we're going ahead and we're going to do our fetch a soc and print the result. So if we refresh this over here, uh, you'll see that we don't get an error. We don't get any results back, but we also don't get an error. So that's the fix to this stuff up here is just to do some sort of check. Now, again, you ask 100 developers, they'll tell you 100 different ways that you could run this check. But the point is, is you need to, when you run a query like this, you always need to check and make sure that you got some sort of result back. You, you need to make sure that you got the expected uh, result back before continuing on, or you will likely run into different errors and so forth. All right, so that is the, the fix for this. So hopefully that helps you with something that maybe you've been kind of fighting with and trying to figure out, helps explain it a little bit more, and helps you to, to kind of figure out where to look why that error is occurring, which is almost always from the query, and also how to account for it and fix it. And of course, again, when you do this here, you can handle that those errors any way that you want. I mean, uh, again, 100 developers, 100 different answers, you can handle those however you want. But you always want to check to make sure that you're actually getting what you ex expected back. And if not, then handling it however you see fit. All right, now, as I always say, if you'd like access to this source code and all of my source code, you can uh, get access to it over on Patreon as a supporting listener. Just go to johnmorrisonline.com slash Patreon. If you like this video, be sure to like it so that I know this is the kind of content that you like. If you know someone who'd benefit from this, who's maybe struggling with this problem, I'd appreciate if you'd share this with them. And as always, if you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. We'll talk to you next time.